Hello, good people of the internet. Like the title suggests, we're gonna go over 10 things about this car, or any Mini Cooper, that are kind of problematic. And chances are, you just bought one, or are thinking about buying one, and here are some things to look out for. All right, so happy Friday, everyone. We made it through another week. My daughter's in here too. Say hi, Autumn. She might be asleep already. In case you're curious, yes, you can comfortably fit a car seat and a stroller in the boot if you need to. I might do a video on that, how well it fits. I see people are kind of curious about that. All right, whatever. So I'm gonna list these items in no particular order and give you a brief solution after each issue. Some of these are more prevalent in first gen, some more in second gen, not too many third gen because they're still kind of new and they have their issues as well, but they're, they're still being ironed out, if you will. So yeah, the first and second gen issues are more solidified, so we'll mostly touch on those. All right, the first one being the gearbox, and this one's more for the first gen Mini Coopers, and more specifically, the CVT. The manuals aren't too bad. Actually, I love the manual transmissions in these cars. It's great, but the CVT transmission is just pretty much crap, and it doesn't help that Mini says that it has lifelong fluid, meaning it's, it, you don't have to service it for length of the car, and that's absolutely not true. You need to service your transmission fluid. I recommend every 40,000 miles. CVT transmissions, I'm not a huge fan of, and they were just kind of poorly made in the first generation of these cars. Now, a solution to this, besides rebuilding the transmission, is to stay on top of your fluid change. And at the top of my head, and I'm not sure which fluid Mini recommends in the CVT, but a quick Google search, or maybe I'll include in the description, will remedy that. All right, number two, the thermostat housing. I guarantee you every Mini, first or second gen, you're gonna run into this issue. Total, total pain. Uh, my first week of ownership with this car, uh, I had this issue. It's a very common problem at about 50,000 miles. There's two failure points. The gasket itself that connects to the block or the thermostat that lives inside the housing is just gonna crap itself. And you cannot replace just the thermostat. You have to replace the entire housing, which is really just cumbersome and annoying for something so simple. But luckily you can do it yourself in a couple of hours as long as you're comfortable following YouTube tutorials. And it's gonna run you about 80 bucks for a non-OE housing, or you can get the OE housing for a few hundred bucks. Chances are, if you have a first or second gen, you're gonna have a thermostat housing that's just gonna break or just die on you. Number three, and that's the also part of the cooling system, and that's the crossover pipe that connects the thermostat housing to the water pump. Now this is a good idea on paper and execution. It sucks, the materials they use are just a horrible, horrible Chinese plastic and these have a failure rate of about 50,000 miles as well. Mine also was bad when I bought the car with 45,000 miles on it. Simply it's just cheap Chinese plastic and where it connects to the, uh, the water pump, it just the plastic deteriorates from all the heat, I, I guess, leaving just an O-ring and then you get a small little leak. So if you have a leak on the passenger side, it's either gonna be a crossover tube deteriorating or your water pump. Now, luckily, if it's just your crossover tube, it's kind of a tedious job, but the replacement part, you can actually pick up at O'Reilly's. They actually carry it in store. And I noticed that of all the auto parts stores, O'Reilly carries the most mini parts in stock. I don't know why, but they had a crossover pipe in stock. It was $55 and it seemed to be a perfect OE replacement. It's a little more involved because you have to remove the thermostat housing to get to it. And uh, you can do it without removing the intake manifold. Uh, it's kind of a pain, but very doable. Just some patience and a cheap borescope if you have one or a mirror can help you align it. And then if you're already doing the pipe, I recommend just doing the uh, thermostat housing as well because you already take it off anyways. So. Not the end of the world if you see that leak and it's good just to do it for peace of mind and if your car has got over 50,000 miles and you're not sure i would just do it all right number four is the water pump itself you're probably seeing a trend with the cooling system on this car it's atrocious and it, it comes down to just the materials they use which just suck 
again, this suffers from plastic internals on the impeller that just does not hold up well, and the gasket design around it also tends to fail. Uh, water pump you can pick up for about 70 bucks for a OE replacement, um, or if you want an exact OEM from the factory or from any, you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars. Uh, this job's kind of a pain. The service manual says you need to replace, you need to drop the motor. I found you can do it without doing that. You just need a low profile 10 millimeter ratchet um, and you can do the job. There's plenty of tutorials online to tackle this job. You got to go in through the passenger side wheel well, take off the carpet on the inside or some covering rather, and you can get to it. You got to undo the tension wheel. It's a really strange design, but you can get to it. Kind of a pain but not the end of the world. Number five, the timing chain slash timing tensioner. And this is one that normally fails at around 75,000 miles. So long story short, you have a chain that connects to your crankshaft, to your upper cams above your engine. Over time, the plastic guides wear out or the tensioner itself wears out, leaving slack in the chain. Uh, the chains can jump a tooth, either retarding or advancing your timing. And if it does it too far, you're gonna grenade your engine. Now, there's also another failure point with this. Assuming little chunks of your plastic guide fail, but your chain's still intact, you run the risk of getting little pieces down your oil pan, and then your collection tube from your oil pump can get uh, starved for oil, and you can destroy your motor that way. So the timing chain whole setup on this car, especially the N14, is just terrible. I plan on doing mine probably in about 10,000 miles just to be proactive, because I really don't want to destroy the engine for no reason. Uh, but luckily the kit's about $60 and you can do it in a day. Oh, Autumn's like, hi Autumn. Yeah, and again, there's plenty of tutorials. You do need to rent a special uh, toolkit to do it, to hold your cams in place. Uh, but it's not rocket science. If you're comfortable doing most things, you could probably tackle this job. When I do it, I will film it for you guys as well. Number six, uh, this is one I have not yet had an issue with and that's simply the power steering will just fail on you with no warning. Unlike most cars, this is not a hydraulic power steering pump to save room because it's kind of a really cramped compartment. They use an electronic power steering, which is fine. However, any electronics kind of heat up when it's in use. It doesn't help the fact that they put it right behind the exhaust manifold, which kind of acts as a catalyst and this thing kind of destroying itself. Uh, the good thing is it's relatively easy to get to and replace from underneath the car. If you have a lift, you can do the job in about an hour. If not, it's a little more taxing. It could take you a whole day. But nonetheless, not the end of the world. A new pump's gonna run you about $250. And again, there's plenty of tutorials online. Your power steering just totally craps itself, not the end of the world, relatively easy to get to underneath the car. Number seven, fuel pump failure. And there's actually two points of failure for this car that are very common. So you have your high pressure fuel pump, which the pump itself is known to fail. And then you have the low pressure fuel pump, which, is so, which the pump itself is known to be okay. It's the relays that feed it that go bad in the little junction box down in the uh, passenger footwell. I just went through this uh, about six weeks ago where my Mini would just shut down just driving it. Just it's very dangerous. Just cruising along the highway and my car just shut down. Uh, I ended up tracing it back to a relay in the uh, passenger footwell. I have a video on, on that on my channel if you're interested. And of course, in many fashion, you can't just change the relay because the low pressure relay, for whatever reason, is soldered onto the main board, which is sandwiched in between two logic boards. It's so infuriating, but it's a free fix if that is your issue. If not, if it's your high pressure, it's actually pretty easy to get to. It's right behind me on the driver's side, back seat, underneath the seat. Again, plenty of tutorials on the internet on how to do that. So if you're having a fuel uh, starvation issue, check with your relays for your low pressure or your high pressure fuel pump. Now, a caveat to this, uh, in the United States, they extended the warranty on the high pressure fuel pump because the failure rate was so high. So if you're having an issue with what, with what you think is your fuel pump, it would be smart to check with your mini dealer because they might just fix it for free under extended warranty. So check that out. At number eight has to do with the vibration on acceleration or any kind of uh, power to the drive line. And that's simply due to the front CV axles not being the most stout. Now they're not necessarily gonna break, it's just where all of the little joints meet. Uh, there's a little bit of play in there. We're talking like thousands of an inch over time and it kind of wears. 
Uh, I have it right now, one of my CB axles, ever so slightly on acceleration. I get a little bit of vibration, it kind of drives me nuts. Luckily, the CB axles on this thing are stupid easy to fix. You don't need to re remove much of anything. Take the wheel off, take the uh, axle nut off, you hammer it through, and I think you can leave um, the brakes and everything on. You drop the lower control arm and it kind of slides out with the pry bar. So very minimal tools required. Now, Rock Auto has an OE replacement for the CV axles for about $50 to $80 depending. But people in many world will swear you have to buy the OE exact replacement from Mini, which is like $800. I have no desire to do that. I'm going to try the cheap route for you guys. I'll be a guinea pig and see how it works. My finding on the internet, a lot of times people will just say stuff, like tribal knowledge. You better not do that because this and this, and I've tried against the grain before and it's worked just fine on cars I've had. A lot of times people hear stuff and it catches on like wildfire. So I don't know, but I don't know, maybe my car will blow up. We'll see. In any case, I will be replacing my axles soon with the Rock Auto specials and we'll see how that works. Number nine, the valve cover slash cam cover, depending where you live, what you call it, uh, gasket is known to fail on these things. Uh, mine had failed. I had caked on oil all over the top of my, uh, my valve cover. Um, and this is just due to, just because the nature of how it's designed, they get kind of weathered and they dry out, they start to crack, they lose their sealing properties. And then you have a perfect storm for it to start leaking all down the front and back of your valve cover. Luckily, it's a $25 fix and it takes about 30 minutes to do. Very, very easy to do. And you do need some gasket maker for two corners on the driver's side, but easy enough. Peace of mind too, once you do it. And it's also smart to do a catch can of these cars just because they're so, so prone to oil leaks. So it is what it is. But yeah, valve cover gasket's gonna fail, I guarantee you. But not the end of the world, very, very easy job. Number 10, and that is if you have a sunroof in these cars. First and second gen, I believe the design is almost the same. If you live in a climate where it rains a lot, or under a tree where debris can get trapped in here, um, there's little tubes that run down your A pillars and your C pillars in the back. If those get clogged, the water will end up on your foot wells in the car um, and an unfortunate design is that if it leaks on your passenger side it goes right into your fuse box and that's also a huge liability and kind of stupid and, and dangerous but if you have any leaks a good way to test is just to undo the roof here and you'll see little ducts or little like gutters with little holes and if you pour water in them they should exit the vehicle kind of underneath where they're at and you'll see water coming out. If not, you can use compressed air to try to blow it out. Nothing too crazy, high pressure. If that doesn't work, you can undo your uh, roof liner. And, but don't take your A-pillars off because there's airbags in there. But you can loosen them up enough to where you can take the tubes out and you can kind of uh, snake them if you will. And if that doesn't work, you just gotta replace them. They're not that expensive and it's pretty easy to do. So, actually, I need to check mine. I haven't had any evidence of leaks, but I need to see what's going on with that just to be proactive, you know? So, there you have it, guys. There's 10 of the most common things that these cars have. And if you can keep an eye on all 10 of these things, you really, really mitigate the any problems you might face. This car can be very reliable if you're on top of it. You just keep oil in the engine because, as you know, these cars kind of drink oil like it's its job. But as long as you keep the oil level good and stay on top of those things, you should be good. And I also recommend changing the manual gearbox fluid as well. It also says it's a closed system for life. I don't believe any manufacturer that says that. So, yeah. Well, I hope someone watching this found this informative don't let this car scare you it does have its issues but if cared for it can be a reliable fun little car all right guys that's all i have for today and i might do a similar video on my corvette this weekend it is so nice today 
I wish I was in the bed, but I'm making this video for you guys, so you're welcome. Alright gang, I'll see you guys later.